Hello, welcome to a coding challenge, Angry Birds. Although, my birds won't be angry. They're going to be loving, loving birds. But maybe they won't even be birds. They'll be like cute little coding train characters. But that's not the point. I am going to program a version, a much simpler, simplified version of an Angry Birds style clone. I'm going to use P5.js. I'm going to use a physics library called Matter.js. And I'm going to get started in one moment. But first, <laughs> Let me diagram out what, I'm go what I need. So I'm going to use an object-oriented programming approach. I'm going to need something called like a box. So this will be a box class. I'm going to need something like a bird. We'll just call it a bird for right now. And I also need the ground. So I'm going to start my simplified Angry Birds is going to have a single box, a single bird. The box is sitting on the ground. I'm going to want to toss the bird at the box and knock it over. And from there, the glorious games throughout the universe that you will make maybe will follow. This is the P5 web editor. I'm going to use P5 for all of the drawing stuff. And I'm going to use the physics library matter.js. Uh, for handling all of the physics. Now, matter.js does have rendering built into it, but I'm going to do things my sort of way of combining both libraries so that I can do all of the rendering custom in P5 and maybe by the end of this video have some of my coding train characters inside of this little game that we make. All right, so first I want to take an object-oriented approach and I'm going to do add file. And I want to add, um, I need a bird.js. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make something called a box.js. And I think I'm going to be able to use the box for both the, I'm going to use the box class for both this thing that can actually get knocked over and the ground, which needs to be something immobile, static. So what does a box need to have? It needs to have an x, it needs to have a y, it needs to have a width, and it needs to have a height. And I'm going to uh, require that all of those arguments are passed in via the constructor. Then I'm going to, oh, and so I need to put the arguments in here, x, y, w, h. And I need to, what do I need to do? I need to have, I'm going to write a show function. And in here, I'm just going to say, I'm going to use fill to make it white. And I'm going to say rectangle uh, this.x this.y, this.w, this.h, okay? So this is the basic idea of a box class with no physics. This is just the data about a box, and this is me drawing it. So now, in the, in the main sketch, I'm going to say, uh, let a ground, I'm gonna have a global variable called ground. I'm gonna say ground equals a new box, and it's going to be, the x is gonna be at zero, the y is gonna be at like height minus 20, and the width will be the full width of the window, and the height will be 20. And then I'm gonna say ground.show. Now it's giving me all sorts of errors, like it has no idea what a box is. And the reason why it has no idea what a box is is because even though I added a new JavaScript file, I didn't add it to my index.html. So let me go and add it to index.html, uh, box.js, and there we go, look. Step one is done. I have the ground, the ground is there now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a box. I'm gonna just call it a box. A box is another new box, and I'm, let's put it over to the side in some arbitrary place uh, and uh, say box.show. There it is, I want it to be tall. I don't know what I'm doing exactly yet, but something like this. There we go. Okay, so that's the thing that I need to throw my bird at. Now, I need another class. I'm going to do add file, and I'm going to call this uh, bird. Oh, look, when did I? It's like knows what I'm going to do in advance. Isn't that crazy? I think I've written other things in the P5 editor with a bird.js. Bird.js. Class bird. And I'm just, you know, I probably could maybe use inheritance here where I made some uh, videos about recently, but I'm just going to do like a sort of horrible copy-paste job. But I'm going to change this to an R to indicate radius because my bird is going to be a circle and this dot r. And now I can say let bird, bird equals a new bird and it'll be at like you know 50 pixels over, 300 pixels down and with a radius of 25. And oh, doesn't know what bird is yet again because I now also need to add bird.js to my 
index.html file. So I've got the bird, I've got the box, these are all the elements. So I have all the, the elements that I want in my scene. Ultimately, I'm gonna wanna have like a stack of boxes and use images to, to make this have more personality. But the next thing that I need to do is add physics. Now I could use, you know, I could start doing, adding some functions to do all the physics myself, but I would like to use a physics engine. Uh, the matter.js library is released through NPM, Node Package Manager, so I can go, and everything NPM, it's already like appearing in my, because I looked for it before I started this, but if I just go to unpkg, unpackage, which is the content delivery network for NPM packages, and do matter.js, and hit enter, we can see this is the URL for the matter.js library. I want to get the minified version of it, um, so I'm going to also add .min.js. So now I have this particular URL. I can go back to the P5 web editor, index.html, and I can, I'm just going to like paste it here for a second. I'm going to grab one of these. These are the, the script tags for the P5 library, right? And so instead of, I've, I've got P5, P5 DOM, P5 sound, and now I want to add uh, matter.js as a library. So these are now all of my libraries and all of my custom JavaScript code. And if I go back to sketch.js, let's make sure the matter.library has loaded. If I just say console log matter, we can see, yes, stuff is coming out here. The library is loaded. That would obviously say if I had loaded that library, I don't know what you're talking about. So whatever I I have a whole bunch of tutorials about the matter.js library, so I don't need to spend, you can, I can refer you to those if you want more background, but basically I need to establish this idea of an engine object and a world object. The world is talking about the environment, and then each one of these things will be a body. This will be a rectangular body, this will be a rectangular body, and this will be a circular body. So my classes, box and bird, I'm going to make them wrappers to, base, to have inside of them a piece of data which refers to the actual matter.js body. So uh, the first thing that I need to do, I think, is let's have a, uh, a world and an engine. And then I think I say engine equals matter. Well, I think I better do this first. Engine equals matter dot engine dot create. I don't know, I'm guessing. I think that's right, I'm having done this before. And then I think the world is actually created when I create the engine, I can just grab it from the world. So now I have the matter engine and the matter world. Then inside of my objects, uh, what I want to do, let's just do the box first. So here, instead of having an x, a y, and a width, and a height, although I think I might keep the width and a height just to store it, um, I now want to add this.body equals uh, matter.bodies.rectangle. This is a function that in the matter library will create a rectangular body object for me. And I can give it, um, I'm going to do this first, like I don't, this, box object no longer is going to have its own x and y. It's just going to give the matter body the x and the y. So I'm going to say x, y, I think this is actually what it gets. Um, and then I need to say matter.world.add to the world this.body. So I need to actually put it in the world. Hmm. So what happened to the box? Oh, 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 I took out this that x that y. So now, the whole point of this is in show, I want to ask, I want to say, hey, matter, <laughs> I want to say, give me, uh, give me a position, um, which is this dot body's position. And now I'm going to draw the rectangle at pause dot x and pause dot y. Now, there may be a way, in fact, that I could dig into the a body and get its width and height, but I'm just gonna store those out of convenience for myself. The, the size of these rectangles is never gonna change, so I can keep that. There is a big issue here though, which is that um, one is that uh, once I start adding the physics, the box could wobble, meaning it could rotate. So I'm also wanting, I'm also gonna wanna get an angle. And I am going to want to then uh, draw it with rotation. So I'm gonna say push, I'm going to say pop, I'm going to say uh, translate, um, pause.x, pause.y, um, 
and uh, then the rectangle's at zero, zero, and I'm gonna rotate by that angle. Okay. There's another little weird nuance here. So I like, for myself, I like to think about placing the rectangle with the x, y in the corner, and then the width and the height, and that's the default behavior of, of P5. But matter.js, when you make a rectangular or circular object, the x, y position for that object is always in the center. So this actually, I've told matter.js where the object is and drawn it in a different place. So I need to reconcile those two things. Um, so to reconcile those two things, there's a few different ways I could do it. One is first, I should say rect mode, center, so that I'm drawing, but now you can see everything's off in a weird place, which is maybe fine. Maybe I just need to rethink where I'm placing this stuff. For example, the ground would be now at width divided by two, height minus 10. So that's the same thing. So that's fine. <laughs> that's one way of doing it. And my rectangle is in a weird place. Um, so, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna position stuff, and I obviously could use some math to get it to rest perfectly on the ground, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Still, there's no physics happening. Why is there no physics happening? I created the body, I added it to the world. It's because I'm not running the engine. So the, what I need to do, draw is my loop. So basically I need to say, every time through draw, step forward in time. So I think I can just say engine.run. No. I looked it up. I probably could have shown you me looking it up, but it's not. How do you look this stuff up? Let me show you looking it up. So if I go here and I go under engine and I scroll through here, I could be like, oh, where's that engine.run function? Oh, it is there. How interesting. Uh, but that's not, oh, I forgot to say matter.engine, but that's actually not what I want. I want to use update. I think there's two different ways of doing things. Um, engine.run will just set the engine running, but I want to lockstep my P5 animation loop with my matter physics engine, so I'm gonna use update. So, and uh, what I'm going to do then is in here, I'm gonna say engine.update, but I need to say uh, matter.engine.update, and there we go, oh! Did you see that? The physics is happening, oh! But the ground fell out below us. We're sinking. It's okay, everybody. We can violate the laws of physics and create an object with infinite mass that never moves. The ground can be known as a static. It can be a static object. So objects that you create in matter.js, the physics engines, can be static or dynamic. By default, they're dynamic. So the tricky thing here is I'm using the same box class to describe both the ground and that rectangle. So I could separate them if they really are different or use inheritance, but Maybe, and let's, oh, why not? Let's use inheritance. This will be fun. I've been talking about inheritance, let's use it. So I'm gonna add another file. I don't know if this is the best technique. I'm gonna call it ground. And I'm gonna say uh, class ground. Oh, this, there's a problem with this idea, but it's fine. Extends box. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say constructor. It's going to get an x, y, width, and a height. I'm gonna say super x, y, width, and height. So now, this is, the ground is a class that inherits everything from box. If you don't know about inheritance, I'll refer you to my video about that. Um, and I can go into sketch, and I can now say ground equals new ground. And it's not defined because I have to add it to my index.html. There it is. Hello. All right. Now, we're still, still. Wow, something really crazy happened. I kind of forgot that the order that it usually doesn't matter for me because I don't have anything really happen until the setup function and draw and everything has loaded, but I can't reference the ground.js JavaScript file before box.js because it's extending box and as it's loading the DOM, it's got to look at the box file first. So this actually is one of the rare instances where I've got to put this script tag before that one. No? Oh no, that's the bird. Yes, this is going to work any second now. Yes. Okay, oh, it still goes away. So now I need to figure out how do I just change one thing to make this static? Can I do this? This dot body is static equals true. Yay, okay. So this is the idea of I have a whole other kind of body that extends box, it does everything the same way, but I can set an additional variable is static to true. And so now when this runs, we've got our Angry Bird box thing over there, and now we're ready to start working with our bird. Ooh, okay, so let's work with our bird now. 
So we need to get rid of the x and the y. I'm going to say this dot body equals matter dot bodies dot circle x, y, r. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to worry about, well, I should worry about rotation. So let me, I'm going to, uh, you know, I probably, I'm going to sort of cheat a little bit by just copying this over because uh, I don't feel like typing right now and then just change this to circle and this dot r and there we go. And then I also should say matter dot, no, no, just, yeah, matter dot world dot add this dot body to the world or <laughs> this dot body to the world. There we go. Ah, you can see, oh, it's rolling away. All right, excellent. So I want to be able to toss this bird over here to this rectangle. How do I do that? I, well, okay, maybe I do an if statement to see if I click the mouse inside it, then I grab it. Well, one of the nice things that matter.js provides is this very general thing called a mouse constraint. So I can add, I'm going to add, and this is a little tricky. I'm definitely going to have to look this up. I'm going to call this uh, M constraint for mouse constraint. And then I'm going to say M constraint equals matter dot, all right, we're going to have to look this up. I want a mouse constraint, create engine options. Okay. So this is what I want, matter dot mouse cre constraint dot create. So I'm going to say matter dot mouse constraint was capital mouse constraint dot create and give it the engine. Okay, so look at this. Options dot mouse was undefined. Options dot element was undefined. May not function as expected. So matter.js is giving me a nice warning here, explaining that, well, you made this mouse constraint, but you need to tell me where you're going to be clicking the mouse. I need to know where you're clicking the mouse. And where I am clicking the mouse is in the canvas. So I could like does the canvas is a DOM element? Does it have an ID? Well, one of the nice things about using P5 is I can just store in a variable the result of create canvas, which is canvas dot, which is this canvas object. And I should be able to now say, I should be able to give it some options. And I'm not sure. And then so I can add a second argument here, which is options. Um, and I don't, I think I need to give it mouse. Null, I'm just going to put things as null, and then element, null. Hmm. All right, I'm back after looking up what I need to do. So what I forgot is that I need this mouse. So I need a separate mouse object that, ha that I can use to create and manipulate those mouse inputs. One of the interesting things, there's a live chat going on right now as I'm recording this, um, and Alka uh, wrote a nice suggestion for aliasing all these matter dot things. You notice how I'm trying to write matter dot, matter dot, matter dot everywhere? So I'm gonna actually just go over here and take, uh, I, can, I can use this, I forget what this is called, but this is kind of a newfangled JavaScript thing where I can basically just make a nice list of all these objects I want. I'm engine, world, uh, mouse constraint, uh, and I'm going to maybe use constraint, and I can just set that all equal to matter. So basically, this is me uh, aliasing everything that's matter.engine, matter.world, matter.bodies. So in theory, I should be able to just say engine now here. This makes things a little bit easier, just mouse constraint here. So my code is a little bit more succinct, and I'll go back and fix that uh, in other places as necessary. But what I need here is a mouse, and I need to say uh, constant m matter mouse, I'll just call it mouse, equals mouse dot create canvas dot elt. So I need to make a mouse object with the DOM element associated with the canvas, and then I believe I can just put this here under options, and now, here we go, let me bring this all the way back. Dare I say, oh no, oh, so close. Oh, what did I forget? I probably have to add it to the world. World.add world m m constraint. Yay, look, now I can pick this stuff up and I can toss it. Oh, look, come on, I can do better. Yay, oh, goodbye. What's left to do? I want to add a few more boxes. I want to put images instead of these, just these boxes and circles. And I think I should try to add a slingshot, even though right now I could kind of just toss it. But let's, okay, well, the first thing would be just adding more boxes. So I'm going to change box to boxes. 
and I am going to uh, now have a little for loop. Uh, I is zero, I is less than three, I plus plus. And then I'm going to say instead of a single box, I'm going to say boxes index i equals a new box. And then here I am going to then say for let box of boxes, little for loop, uh, draw them all. So now you can see, oh, look at that. What's so crazy is when they, I start them all at the same point, that two objects cannot appear, cannot occupy the same space in the world of physics. So they like burst off from each other, but let's do something like say 300 minus i times 75, which will stack them. So now I have a little stack of boxes, and then I can toss it, and there we go. Oh, I, I didn't knock them over. Oh, whoa, I threw it, I threw it over. So this is, there's some nuance here to how physics engines work and how I'm going to need to create some balance in the system. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things there is I probably need to increase the number of iterations per update in order for it not to be able to move so fast as to jump over the stuff. But let me just run this again. I want to really see if I can knock those things over. Yay, I knocked them over. I could also play around with um, the, the properties like restitution and friction, which are physics attributes of each of these objects, restitution being elasticity or bounciness. So maybe towards the end of this video, I'll try adding that. But now we're in pretty good shape. So let me add the slingshot. So there is, so what I did right now is I created this idea of a mouse constraint. And a mouse constraint is this very generic constraint that just like anytime I click on something, it'll make a little spring like connection between where I click the mouse and the object so I can move it around. But what I want is actually to introduce a constraint maybe right here that's fixed and only that's fixed to this point and only attached to this particular bird. And I think it's probably smart for me to wrap this into a class because I'm really going all in on this object-oriented programming approach. So let me make another JavaScript file called slingshot.js. Um, and let me just write out the outset, remember that I need to refer to slingshot.js. Uh, then class slingshot. So what does a slingshot need? So it needs, I think it needs an X and a Y, like where is the point from which this object will be attached? And then it needs, oh no, no, that's not where these go. It needs an X and a Y, and then it needs a body. So now I'm gonna create, um, let's call this, this.sling, call it equals uh, constraint dot create, uh, and then options. I think this is how that works. And this should be constraint. <laughs> constraint. So I'm going to make up some options now. So I need to configure that constraint. The two things I want to be connected with this constraint are a point, which I'll call point A. This is in the, in the matter.js documentation specs. Point A, which is an object with an X, which will be what I pass in, and a Y, which will be what I pass in. And then also uh, it needs uh, a to be connected to something else, body B. So it, I think it could be body A and body B or point A and body B. There's different ways you can configure it, but I want a point and a body. I could make another body that's a static body, I guess, but a point is the equivalent to that. So then the body is going to be, uh, oh, I don't think I need an object here, just this particular body. Then I want to say uh, world.add. Uh, this uh, to the world, this dot sling. And the other things that are part of a constraint, I believe, I forget the actual is stiffness, like how, what it, the, it's like a spring connection, how stiff is it? So I think that's actually just called stiffness. Uh, a value of one means the constraint should be very stiff. A value of 0.2 means the constraint acts like a soft spring. So let's just try, just to start with, let's try 0.5. And then a length is very important. What is the rest length of that spring? Let's make it like 20 pixels. So now I've created this slingshot. I also think it would make sense for me to uh, draw it. So I'm going to do a show, I'm gonna make a show function and I'm gonna say stroke 255 and I'm gonna draw a line. Well, let's do, um, let's do, uh, let's make pause A equal this dot sling dot point a 
and pos b equals this dot, dot sling dot body dot position. These are the two things that the sling, the string, the spring, the connection, the constraint is attached to. So draw a line from pos a dot x, pos a dot y, pos b dot x, pos b dot y. Mm. Oh, I'm not, I haven't, so I think, by the way, I'm writing this class, I didn't even make the slingshot. So now I need to go into sketch.js and I'm going to make a variable called slingshot. I'm going to at, uh, say uh, slingshot equals a new slingshot and I need to give it a x and a y, which, where did I make the bird? 5300, let's just put it at the same place. Uh, and then I need to connect it to the bird's body. You can see already, look, this is kind of like stuck somewhere, right? Ah, this is great. But let me draw it because I think that'll make it more obvious. Uh, slingshot uh, show. Uh, and what did I call it? Slingshot show. Slingshot show. Ah, pause B. Cannot. Oh, body B. Body B. It's point A and body B. So if I do this, right, you can see. There it is. Now, okay, this is some goofiness here. So one thing that's really weird is that if I drag the mouse off, the mouse constraint gets confused and thinks it's stuck. So that's just an interaction design problem that I have to iron out at some point. Let's change a few things, like let's make the bird much smaller. Let's, um, let's move everything over a little bit, just to give me a little space here. Um, so now we can see, and maybe I should make that rest length uh, a little bit longer. There we go. And maybe the stiffness should be a little bit less. There we go. So I'm pulling this back. The idea is that I'm going to pull it back and let go, and I want it to fly. So we're getting there. I have this slingshot now. Now how do I release it? Ooh, I have to come out to come up with an, a way of releasing this. I need a way somehow to launch this bird off of the slingshot. Like the slingshot should be broken and it should, well, the constraint should be broken and it should go flying. So first let me at least create a mechanism for that. So let me write a function here and I'll call it uh, fly. And I think if I just say body, um, this dot sling body b equals null. Like if I just detach the body, then the, the, the thing that's attached to it will go flying. So let's just try in, let's just add, just as a test, a key pressed function. If key equals space, then slingshot.fly. So again, I need to figure out when it should be flying, but if I just hit the space bar, ooh, cannot read property position of null, slingshot line 24. So, okay, so only, if this dot sling, if there is a body attached, then should I bother to draw the line, okay? So I need to also not draw the line if there's no body. So let me run it and then hit, there we go. We can see, now could I possibly time it? Like now my interaction is I have to do this. Yeah! <laughs> but I shouldn't have to hit the space bar, right? I shouldn't have to hit the space bar. So how can I determine a time where I should call, have it fly? What if I were to get its, the body's speed, right? So a suggestion came in the chat to just look at when the mouse is released. I don't think, I think this isn't gonna work timing wise, but let's, let's try it. What if I just write function mouse released, which is a global P5 event for when I release the mouse. And there I could just say slingshot fly. So now I'm pulling this back and we release the mouse. See, it didn't have a chance to move. I, before it could start pulling it, so I could use like set timeout. This is kind of ridiculous. Uh, uh, I could, and then like do it in like 50 milliseconds later. Is that right? Uh, maybe, maybe it should be more like 100 milliseconds later. <laughs> oh, that's actually kind of great. That worked. Weirdly, just giving it a little time later, I was going to go through this whole thing of testing its speed. You know what? 
This is good enough. I think you could probably, those of you watching, you might want to come up with a different solution. But I'm surprised that this actually worked. Just a little set timeout. Just give it 100 milliseconds later. Thank you to beta tester 704, who maybe was the one who suggested that. Um, so this is great. Ah, we have anger. Now, one thing I should say is, like, at some point, I want to be able to like put, put, have a new bird. And so there's a variety of ways I could do that. Let's use key pressed. We'll just use a key press right now. And I could say, um, um, I could say this. I could remake the bird. And then I could say uh, slingshot.attach this bird.body. And then uh, in bird, I'm mean, sorry, in slingshot, I could say attach, get a body. And I could say this.sling.body b equals that new body. So here, now what I should be able to do is I should be able to let it fly, knock the stuff over, and then, oh sure, I want to probably detect when it should do this. I can hit space, oh no, sorry, yeah, oops, space, and then, oh there is, there's a big flaw here in my system. I'm not going to worry about it, this is good enough, because I could like, first of all, I can use the mouse constraint. <laughs> the mouse constraint will let me do anything, and then I can also release, <laughs> when I release, the box, also the bird gets released. But you, the viewer, these things can be cleaned up. These are interaction design problems. There are better solutions, but I've got, this is kind of exciting, I've got the basics of Angry Birds here. Amr writes, you should utilize the concept of potential and kinetic energy for it. It's a, just a pure projectile thing. So I would love to see somebody make a variation on this. Um, uh, and, and submit it uh, to thecodingtrain.com. There's a way that you can submit your versions to end doing that. But I just got one more thing I want to do. I want to add some images to this. Before I add the images, there is kind of a big bug here that I really should fix, which is that when I put the new bird in, there's actually another bird. That old bird is still here. I'm just not drawing it anymore. Maybe I want it there, right? It should actually is there, or maybe I should remove it. But probably before, right now, I should just say world.remove uh, bird.body um, world. And it's always the, it's the other way around. So I believe this, right? Let me, let me see if I can show you what I mean, right? I'm going to shoot this over there. Now notice this is here. It's going to, I'm not going to see it anymore, but I'm going to try to shoot it right over there again. Right? See how it hit the invisible thing? So let me remove it and that should, that should fix that. So if I do this and it's there and then I do this again, oh, <laughs> I do this again. Anyway, you can see it's gone. It's removing it. So there are different ways that I could approach this. A Simon in the chat is pointing out that instead of just making the body be of the slingshot null, I could actually remove the slingshot. I could reuse the same bird by just resetting its position. So again, you might make a, have a different take on this, refactor this in a different way, but I've got the basic idea down. Now, I want to start adding images. All right, so I have all of these uh, Coding train character image is designed by Jason Hegland. Thank you for that. I'm going to use the dot for the bird, a little smiley dot, and the angry equal size sign for the block. Now, this block is square, I think, not rectangular, so I'll probably have to adjust the dimensions. But the first thing I need to do is upload these images to the web editor. So the way that I will do that is by just going over here, doing add file, and then uh, I can just drag these two images in. You know, I could put them in a folder or something, but I'm, uh, and then we can see they're there. So now I have dot .png and equals .png. And, you know, there, there's probably a thoughtful way <laughs> that I could think about what if I want different blocks to show different images, but I'm just going to, in a very simple way, use the preload function of P5. I'm going to have a variable called dot .image and a variable called uh, box .image. And I'm going to say dot image equals load image dot dot png. And box image equals load image, uh, what, was, what is it called? Equals dot png. And let's first just change the bird to show, um, oh, it doesn't need, instead of a circle, instead of fill, I'm just going to say image, image, and then I'm, what was the name? Dot img. Ooh, and then I want to say uh, image mode 
center, and then I'm going to have to say this, this dot r. And this should be this dot r times 2, really, if I'm thinking about that as a radius. So there we go. So we can see now I've got the little dot. It's so tiny. I should make it bigger. And I think what I would prefer to do also is draw the slingshot behind the bird. OK, so now I have my dot. There it goes. Now I just need to replace those blocks. So the boxes, uh, when I make the box, I am in sketch.js. When I make the box, I'm giving them an x and a y and a width and a height. Let's just, let's just make them square right now. I could have an image that's not square. Um, so they're much larger now, but that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is in box, let's change it to image. Image, uh, what did I call it? Box image. There we go. Oh, we've got a problem. <laughs> so the ground is, is messed up now because the ground is also the equals. Uh, so, and we also have to say image mode center. <laughs> the ground is this like smushed equals. But guess what? Not to worry. I used inheritance. Oh, I'm so happy I used inheritance. And I could just override the show function. And there's probably a more thoughtful way I could do this. But I am just going to uh, put this all in here. And I'm just going to put this back to rect and back to this. And now, there we go. So I now, here we go. <laughs> I have my Angry Birds clone with P5 and Matter.js. And I'm going to pull this back, release it. Oh. oh, wait, why did it make it so small? <laughs> so one thing, I really, I really need to uh, do a lot of refactoring of this because I did something very silly here where I remake the bird, <laughs> but I use a different size, which having a hard-coded value here is pretty bad. All right, let's try this one more time. Wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's add restitution. So I'm going to go to the bird. And when I make the body, I can also add some options. For example, one option might be restitution, which is like elasticity. Um, let's give that a value of 1. <laughs> let's look it up in the documentation. Always positive and in the range 0 to 1. A value of 0 means the collision would be, a value would be perfectly in, inelastic and no bouncing would, may occur. A value of 0.8 means the body may bounce back with approximately 80% of its kinetic energy. So let's try um, giving it a value of 0.8. Oh, guess what? I can make up this variable called options till the cows come home. But if I don't actually put it in creating the body, it's not going to make any difference. So now, let's see how that changes things. There we go. <laughs> it's kind of like Jenga, where it just like slid out a little bit. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, it's even bigger. Whoa, OK. Oh, things have gone really off the rails here. This is supposed to be 25. And let's, let's, um, let's, let's be a little bit more uh, kind. Let's give it 0.5, and let's also Let's also go to the box, box and uh, let's give that also a restitution. OK, here we go. This is my Angry Birds game made with P5 and Matter.js and coding train characters. <laughs> oh, ball, ball, ball. Thank you for watching this coding challenge. Sorry to interrupt, I'm about to wrap this video up, but I want to show you two quick improvements before I finish. The first one is when I loaded my coding train equals character, it was a square image and there was actually a lot of additional extra space uh, on, the, on the width. And so there was some funny physics happening that looked a little bit off. So I've now actually cropped and re-uploaded that image so that it's 84 pixels by 100. The other thing that, uh, thanks to a suggestion, I increased the mass 
of the bird's body. So the, the matter.js will give elements a, a sort of default mass, probably based on their size and their geometry, and I just take the bodies and set its mass to its own mass times four. And so now, if I were to play my game, one more time, let's zoom in on this, and go, boom! Yeah! I am so angry, dot, shiftman, coding, oh, oops, sorry, bonk. So this is my version. There are so many flaws to what I've done here in terms of how I've organized the code. There's some like weirdness in the physics. I haven't really been so thoughtful about the design. The whole slingshot mechanic is kind of off. So there's a couple things you could do from here. Number one, go to thecodingtrain.com, find the page for this challenge. The source code will be there as well as any other supplementary links. And you can submit your own version. Maybe you just want to improve the way I wrote the code to make it better organized so that people could see that. Maybe you want to make your own delightful design of a scene. Maybe you have a totally other game mechanic and idea for how the physics of this world should work. Maybe you actually want to build this out to be uh, you have more features and levels and score. There's so many possibilities. So make your own version of this. Uh, you don't need to use P5. You don't even need to use Matter. These kind of concepts will extend to other drawing libraries and game engines. You know, Phaser might be one that you would, should take a look at even perhaps. Uh, you can check out the video from Cat Small about using Phaser and CodePen that's on this channel. And I will see you in a future coding challenge. Thank you. Mwah. Goodbye.